Hi guys, welcome back. And today in this video, we're talking about all new GPT OSS models, which was released yesterday by OpenAI team. And we're going to talk about this particular model and how we can use this model within our local machine. So this model, as you can see over here, has released in two flavors. One is the 120 billion parameters and another one is the 20 billion parameter. These are the two state of the art open weight language models, which is also a reasoning model. And it also is available under the Apache 2.0 licensing, which means it is flexible for you to use it within your local uh, machine and you can use it in an organization based on the licensings and stuff, right? So you can see that these model that OpenAI claims that they are pretty close to the O3 models, uh, like the GPT O3 models, and they are quite powerful in terms of reasoning and they also does support the the toolings and stuff so this is the model details as you can see over here they also say that the gpt oss uh, 120 billion parameter has got 36 layers of the weights and they have got 117 billion parameters in total and the active parameter per token is 5.1 billion and total experts are 128 and the active expert per token is four right and this is the details that they have got about the performance and steps over here and you can also scroll down a bit and you can see that the uh, the hle is also given over here which is also quite interesting so you can see that the gpt oss 120 billion parameter performs uh, with the tooling support of o3 uh, like 19 whereas this one is like 24.9 and the gpt oss um, 20 billion parameter is like 17.3 which is pretty close to o4 mini with tools like 17.7 as you can see this is where things are very interesting so I'm going to show you how we can run this GPT OSS 20 billion parameters uh, in my local machine and how it is going to be comparable with the O4 mini, which is amazing. And you can go to the Olama website over here and you can see that they have got this models and the models, the, the one, this one, which is the GPT OSS model, which is at least like 23 hours ago. Uh, it is one of the very fastly downloadable or downloaded version of the model that we have got over here and you can get the 20 billion or 120 billion parameters and i want to show you this one because 120 billion parameter requires quite a lot of uh, gpus to be honest so you can't really run this at least in my machine i can't run this you need at least 80 uh, gb of, uh, of of the gpu memory to run this whereas the 20 billion parameter you can run even with a machine with a ram of 16 gb which the uh, which the open ai team climbs so i'm going to run this one because i have 64 gb of ram so i can still run this without any hesitations so let's go and start using this particular model and i have already updated the olama within my machine so it's very straightforward for me to start using it so i'm gonna jump right into the olama over here as you can see and i will show you how it actually works so this is the olama's new window if you have been using for some time this window is going to be quite familiar for you uh, it's pretty much like the chat gpt's window over here they have the same kind of the designs over here uh, but they have some more tweaks this time you see that there is this option called as a uh, search so basically if you're going to be using the gpt oss 20 billion parameter you also get a search capability which is the tool which is enabled inside this particular feature whereas the same thing doesn't uh, work if you're going to go with the deep seek r1 or gamma 3 those will not have the search capability whereas the gpt oss has got the the search as well as the turbo feature so this turbo feature is very interesting it is especially for um, for you to use an additional power which is powered by the olama team so we're not going to talk about that one which it needs additional licensing of dollar 20 per month but i'm just going to go with the search capability and i'll show you how this actually works so the moment i ask any questions to the uh, gpt oss 20 billion parameter model it is going to start doing the thinking reasoning and tool calling if it requires the search capability it's going to do the search and then it is going to give you the result pretty much like what chat gpt uh, or gpt 40 mini does that exactly the same thing is going to happen even over here within my local machine so i'm going to say uh, what's the weather right now in auckland nz so the moment i ask this question see this is not a trying to detail on a real-time detail that the model can give you but because we have got the search capability enabled now this particular model can go and do a search for you online and then look at that so it's going to do the searching for the current weather in the auckland nz 
and it is going to get you that result this cannot happen if you are using a model like the deep seek or gamma 3 uh, over here in this particular uh, local large language model because it doesn't have the tooling support but this guy does has the tooling support so it's going to go and search all this information for you over here and it's going to give you this information saying as of july 20th uh 6 50 a.m new zealand time Ooh. It's wrong actually because now we are in August, right? So it's giving the it's July 20th, 2025 result. I have no idea why this is giving completely rogue information. So, but yeah, you got the idea, right? At least it is doing the search capability, but it's not great search. So you see that it's doing, it's just getting some information there and it's getting that information. But current temperature is 11 degree in, in Auckland while the time is 5.30 a.m. So that is what it is happening at the moment. Um, at least the search is happening. But I'm going to go and do a bit of a coding which I have used with the Cloud Opus 4.1 to write a playwright code. And I'm going to use the same exact command over here to see if my local large language model can able to write the code as well. This is something one of the interesting thing that I really wanted to try it out and see if the local large language model can compete with an higher level models. I know it's like it's not really an apple to apple uh, comparison but this is like a dinosaur versus an ant comparison which i'm doing but i just wanted to see how that really works just for fun so this is one of the command that i actually used while working with the cloud opus 4.1 which was released yesterday and i wanted to use the exact same kind of uh, informations even in here with the cloud opus 4.1 while well, i asked to, to write a uh, full playwright c -sharp .net framework using dependency injection, page object model, separation of concern, extended framework, run the test in the container for this recorded code from the playwright code gen. It actually gave me an amazing code as you can see. This is the structure it generated and then started creating the project file. It also created the app settings, pages uh, and all the uh, framework level steps over there dependency injection was also done and then it also uh, started adding a uh, docker uh, docker container for me for that particular uh, question that i asked right the same thing which i'm going to do over here with our local large language model and we'll see how that works so i'm going to go over here i'm going to paste the same command that i actually used for the cloud opus as well and i'm going to hit run and we'll see what is going to happen. So this time, I expect this particular model to give me a very small information, lot not like an amazing information like how the Cloud Opus 4.1 really did. But look at that. It is doing a lot of thinkings over here, and the thinking tag is still running, which is also amazing to see that the local large language model is doing all these things, like edge computing is really happening over here without going anywhere in the internet. But still, it's going to the internet because we have given that search capability there. So it's going to do a bit of a search online for the dependency injections and stuff to get some information that it needs. Uh, and also it's checking for the test runner with the playwright c -sharp .net on their website. So it's just reading some information there, which is good. Actually, it's like pretty much like without spending or sparing more um, tokens and all those problems that we had before with the chat GPT, because you also lose the capability of searching after a while uh, if you are using a free version. But now look at that, it's all doing within my local machine. And it also found out that we also need to write the uh, Playwright C Sharp test in the, with a Docker file. So it is going and searching online uh, for the Docker setup over here. So it, it has went to the right link to get the Docker information. And it has found that over here. It's also getting a thinking of how we can write it. Just awesome to see that everything is happening over here. It's, it's a lot of thinking is going on. And I'm just going to wait until this execution is finished to see how it is going to do that and what structure is going to come up with. There we go. I think the thinking are all done right now. And now it's creating a project overview. So the test is going to be X unit. This is the example is fact. And it's creating a fixture for the playwright plus dependency injections to create the browser's context page and register page object. And also creating a page object model level code for the login page, application page, and the upload page. I think it's pretty much exactly the same thing what the Cloud Opus does yesterday for me. The same thing is happening over here as well. And I think that it's pretty close, right? Like it's doing what it is supposed to. And also saying uh, why it's layout and things, so which is great. Uh, and it's creating a configurations with iConfiguration app settings.json file. I think the same thing goes in here as well. 
with the configurations. I saw somewhere about the config. Yeah, look at that. It has created some configurations uh, and it also creates a Docker image to run the, them in the container. And this is the structure that it has come up with. The CS file, app settings, program, playwright fixture, collections, uh, the page, it has a base page, login page, application page. Look at that, the same base page and then login page, application page, great. And there is a helpers for the file helper and the locator helper. And then it's writing a test data and the application data. And you know that this new window of the Olama has also got the feature to do a code snippet and stuff. It's also looking pretty great that it's showing everything for us over here. And look at the code, guys. Like it is writing all the code pretty much like how it did with the with the cloud opus. I cannot really say that it is competing with it. Um, Again, as I told you, this is like comparing with an ant with a dinosaur. But still, look at that. It is working. My fan is cranking in my laptop already. Uh, it is doing quite a lot of things uh, behind the scene. But look at that, the number of tokens it is generating. At least I can't see it over here. But it's not bad. To be honest, it is writing a lot of things for me uh, over here. And it also adds the key point and the information for every single operation that it is doing. I think I like this particular code already. This is already pretty good comparing to the models which came out like in 2023, 2024, early 2024. This model is quite good. The reasoning is pretty amazing. And it is showing me uh, the scaffolded code, like what I really need for building this test. So I like the fact that this model, the GPT OSS 20 billion parameter is pretty amazing. It is doing good. And they also are told that this particular model, so if I just go to the browser, I don't know why the browser is not here. Oh yeah, it's here. Uh, you can see that they say that this particular OpenAI's GPT OSS model uh, has got the uh, the features like agency capabilities, uh, which is mainly used for the function calling, web browsing, uh, and which is the search that you just saw there. And it also does the Python tool calls and structured outputs. It also does a full chain of thought operation over here. And also does the configurable reasoning effort uh, where you can adjust the reasoning effort like low, medium, and high based on the specific use cases and latency need. And also uh, it has the fine tunable um, details for while you do the customization of the model. And then it is of course with the Apache 2.0 licensing but freely without copy life restrictions or patent risk. I don't know what that really means because I don't, don't do any development or things of that nature. There we go. So look at that. This model is looking pretty amazing and I can see that it generates the code and also does a lot of different operation for me uh, with just one single command. It's not slow, right? You, you saw that how fast it is. It is performing pretty amazing and I see that this is pretty good. So that's it guys, this is all about my take on this new GPT OSS model which runs in my local machine. 20 billion parameter, not the 120 billion parameter. It's never gonna work in my laptop unless until I have got a GPU, maybe 25090 or 24090 or maybe some other machines. But for now, I don't have it. But but yeah, it's working, which is, which is pretty good. That's it guys, once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Catch the next one.